Good afternoon everyone. Today we are learning how to cut the cross halving joint and thus concluding our mini-series on halving joints. So, let's go. So, starting with two blank bits of timber. Let's get in close and we can see what tools we need and how to mark this out. Okay, so with these two bits of components, we are looking to nest them together like that to create a cross. So tools we need for this are cross cut saw, marking knife, marking gauge, your Jesus pen, a square, a mallet, chisel, and preferably a router plane because it makes everything so much easier here, but you can work without it if you want to. So let's get into marking it out. So first thing, of course, marking our face sides and face edges. So that face, that edge. Let's go for that face and that edge. And now the orientation that these are going to go together, let's say, is like that. So it's going to kind of, oh, I thought it was going to create the heart again, but it wasn't, unfortunately. So we're going to nest them together like that. So what I'm going to do to make this easier for myself is that I'm also going to put an X on here as well. And on the underside here, I'm going to put an X. So then I know that that material I want to be removing and that material I want to be removing. Because as a beginner, it's quite easy to get your face sides and face edges mixed up when you're wanting to remove timber on the opposite side. So with this, remove timber there, remove timber there, then we can slot them together like that. So what we're going to do is get our square, reference it off our face edge here, almost did it wrong, and then line that up there by eye. Now, what we're going to do here is take advantage of the compression of wood in order to get a really tight fit with this. So what you might do is you might square this bit of timber across here and then just mark around it with a knife. But then obviously that has offset the knife line to the outside of this component here, even though it's a really fine point on here. So what I like to do just to get a really, really tight joint on there is square up with one end, take the material away, do not move that square, give ourselves a really fine mark to work to. So light pressure, slightly increase the pressure. And now without moving the square, I'm gonna pop that back on there, keep the pressure down on it. And now we're gonna work on this side here. So again, really light pressure. So now providing we work accurately to these knife lines, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that this timber can ever, ever so slightly compress, and that'll give us a really, really nice joint. So essentially these lines are ever so slightly thinner than this component here. So. That's all done. Now let's do exactly the same on this timber. So again, I'm using my X here. That's obviously the bit I want to remove. Just check where my face side is. There it is. So reference the square off there. Material off, light pressure, and without moving it, like that. There we go. So now what we've got to do is get our marking gauge, which is over here. Here I'm using the Veritas marking gauge, so I don't even need a ruler for this. I can just measure it like that. And then on the side here, I've got metric graduations that I can read. So these are 26 millimeters. That means I can take this down to 13 millimeters and I've got half the thickness. So what we're going to do now is mark how far down into each of these we want to be cutting. Now, again, if you watch the previous videos, you'll know how easy it is to do this wrong. Reference this stock off of your face side every time. So this is the face side. We're gonna mark it across like that. And again, on the other side. So now I've got these lines here. I can see roughly how far I need to mark with this gauge. There we go. So that's marked off the face side. Now it's quite easy to look at this and think, ah, cross, cross, I'll mark off that. Don't do that. Mark off your face side. Doing this will allow your joint to fit together perfectly in terms of up and down, because if your marking gauge is slightly off, it's going to exaggerate that discrepancy and your joints aren't going to sit flush. If you reference it off the same face side each time, those discrepancies are going to cancel each other out and you'll get a nice flush joint. There we go, that is all squared on there. And now we're just going to get the knife and join those lines up. So again, referencing off the face side on the back here, get the knife into that line at the front, slide the square up, drag back, that. There we go, that one is done. Let's do this ash now. So referencing off the face side. I know this term is being used a lot, but it is so important with joints like this, not only to be able to get them together in the same orientation each time, but to allow your joints to actually fit together. Because for years, I neglected face sides and face edges, and I wondered why my joints weren't working properly. So there we go. Waste material, waste material, and then the face sides are, in theory, up but I'm gonna be removing that mark there. I'm just gonna redraw that on so I know. So there we go, we can see how those are meant to go together. So let's get hacking out this material. So to the vise. So we're gonna remove it from this one first. So get that in there nice and even. 
and we're going to get our crosscut saw and work as close to these lines as possible. I've said it in a previous video, what some people will do at this point is get themselves a chisel and chisel diagonally into that line from the waist side and then that will give them a v-groove that they can then put their saw into and go down to that baseline. I don't tend to do this because sometimes I have off days, sometimes I have good days with my saw and I don't want to run the risk of accidentally going into the material I want to keep here. I would rather go back to it with a chisel. The other advantage with a chisel is that it gives you a really nice crisp edge to work to, whereas a saw gives you a bit of a fluffy edge. So although it's a great method and it works for a lot of people, I don't tend to do it. I just like to saw about a millimetre to half millimetre away from the line and chisel back to it. So, as you can see here, starting on the back edge, I'm just going to level the saw out as I go, and then just work down to that baseline. Just watch for that on both sides. You want to go right down to it to help the clean up later on. Now, if you want to know why I'm starting at the back edge and then leveling out the saw, I did a video on how to saw correctly and that will be linked up here and you can watch that. It will give you great things to practice before starting cutting any of these joints and will help you enforce those good habits when it comes to sawing. So, sorry, enough chatting, let's carry on. And the beauty of this joint is it doesn't matter if you go too far below that line because it's all hidden anyway, so that's all right, it doesn't really matter too much. And now we're just going to do a few cuts in the middle here to weaken that material. There we go. Right, let's chisel it out now. So what I'm doing now is standing from the side here, so I'm looking at this line down its entire length, because if I stand here and did it, I can't see if my chisel is tipping forwards or backwards properly. If I stand here, I can see if that is square to the material or not, and therefore get a more accurate cut. But we're not going for accuracy at this point, we're going for whack whack, so here we go. Remove that, remove that, remove that, remove that. It's always a satisfying job, that bit, I must say. Flip it over, cramp it up again, go from the other side, give it a bit more whack whack. Get out of there. There we go. So, all that rubbish out of there. Well, and then you've given your kids some dice or something to play with. Happy days. Bit more whacking needed, so let's get that bit out. So I'll get it pretty close to that baseline, about a millimetre off or so. Don't smash all the way through on this, work from both sides because then you'll stop it from breaking out on the opposite face. So you'll see I'm flipping it over every now and then just to make sure I'm coming down to that baseline evenly. And now we'll go for a little bit of pairing with the chisel, so get rid of all the peaks. In fact, we'll go to the tail vise for that. So pressure on top of the chisel and just take away some of those peaks. This is just very coarse adjustment at the moment, so don't need to be too precious about this. And just flip it over and go from the other side, take out some of those peaks. And there we go, so we've got a pretty flat surface to reference from there. Now what you can do from this point, as I've said in previous videos, just keep working through that with a chisel. So get right into this line here pair all the way through and then every now and then get yourself a little ruler or something pop that in there and then see if you can find any high points in there if you can mark it with a pencil and just chisel it out and eventually you'll work your way down to those baselines there and give you a nice flat surface to work to so that'll work just fine an easier method is to get yourself the optional router plane so what i'm going to do with this is set it so it's taking off the peaks of everything there we go so that's just going through now See, I'm just working from opposite faces here to make sure it, it does all come down evenly. Approaching our baseline now, I can see it's starting to fray a little bit on this corner, and chances are that's where the V left over from the marking gauge is breaking off. So let's just do a tiny tweak here now. Yeah, I can see that that router blade is going straight into the marking gauge line. So. That is all lovely and flat on the bottom. Quick word of note, if you want to know why I'm using the Veritas router plane, I did a tool duel between the Veritas and the Lee Nielsen router plane. Link is up here, and that will tell you why I use this router plane and the advantages I see with it, especially in terms of sharpening, because obviously doing joints like this, you want to have a nice sharp blade. This has a very big advantage over the Lee Nielsen. You should definitely watch it. Let's get these walls chiseled down now. So chiseling down these walls, I've got about a millimeter between my saw cut and the line there. And I don't want to be taking that all off in one hit because it's just going to end up pushing the chisel back like this and damage this nice crisp line we've got along here. 
So what I'm gonna do instead is halve that material, take away half a mil, and then I will trim it back to that final line. And what I'm also doing is looking at it with my eyesight going this way as well. So for the same reason as before, I can see if my chisel is square or not. So let's take off half a mil to start with, and we'll do that all the way along. So into the knife line like that, get it square. Nice controlled taps all the way to the bottom. And because I'm so close on this side here, I'm just going to pair it down. So you see how easy it is for me to pair down this end grain like this? Again, I'll plug another video here. If you haven't already seen it, I did a video on how to get a deadly sharp edge on the end of a chisel. The link is up here. I would very much recommend watching that because you can see how you're able to do that and just take nice smooth shavings out of end grain. Just got a little bit of clear up to do in the corners now on this one. So there we go. I think that one is done. Now I'm going to do exactly the same to the other component and I'll see you on the other side of that. Right, so they are both hacked out now, or I say hacked, they are precisely shaped out, should we say. So first thing we're gonna do is just double check them all with a ruler and make sure there's no humps in the middle that it's able to rock on. I've done this with a router plane, so it shouldn't be the case for me, but if you've done this with a chisel or a shoulder plane, then it's entirely possible for you to have small peaks in the middle that it's gonna rock on. So that's all looking good. Next thing to check on these is the shoulders, if they're actually 90 degrees. I haven't got one, but you could get a combination square to check this. For me, usually over something this small, I can just sort of do it by eye and see if there's any little small points in there that I need to take out. I'm choking up on the chisel when I do this. It's just a little bit of fluff in the corner. So I'm just gonna remove that out. So I'm just gonna run down that with a knife. That'll get rid of any loose debris in there. So let's see if they assemble, shall we? Let's firstly see if this one here will locate on this section here, just to check we have got this fit right. Ooh. Sticky. Near it on my mic. So that's a good fit. And let's just check this ash one on here as well. Yeah, again. Hear it creaking. So, moment of truth. Let's get this assembled. I reckon we're going to need a hammer for this. Actually, no, let's do this a bit more carefully. Let's do it with a cramp. So, pressure right in the middle. There we go. I'll get my microphone close. There we go. That is bottomed out. It's the best one I've done. Happy days. So let's get a bit of a close up on that. And there you go. So as you can see, really tight fit along there. Really, really tight fit along there. No gaps whatsoever. Really nice and crisp. This isn't even planed flush yet. And on the edges here, because we didn't undercut the edges of those shoulders, there is no gaps on there either. And there we go. That is how you cut a cross halving joint with minimal gaps, if any. And yeah, that is a rock solid joint. As I said in the previous one, obviously it's quite easy for me to edit things to make it look like everything went to plan. So to prove that there is no glue in this joint, let's just get it on the edge here. Voila, no glue whatsoever. It all holds itself together through the compression of the timber using that method that I showed you at the start. So yeah, there we go. I can't get it apart again. Ah. <laughs> but anyway. There we go. I hope you found that useful and enlightening. I will see you in the next video.